Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. It's uh, always good to have confirmations. That means uh, someone, something, you know, kind of confirms what you thought all along, or at least um, enhances your knowledge about the subject, a situation, an incident, a person. In this case, um, I'm going to use Vladimir Putin's statements or his assessment on how much NATO is involved in uh, the um, Ukraine war. I've been saying this for some time that, uh, sometime being months, that is not about Ukraine and is not uh, Ukraine fighting Russia, but actually it's United States fighting Russia on the territory of Ukraine, with Ukraine being the, the ones that are sacrificed based on national interest and traditions and national uh, blah blah blah. Okay, I got that one. And the United States obviously supposedly has, uh, you know, is in an alliance, in, is a member of NATO, which NATO actually is United States. And it's just, um, it is a <clears throat> legal framework for the United States to say, well, you know what, we are here together, let's fight together. But mostly NATO is United States. This guy just legitimized uh, the attacks and the alliance because we're more than one. So if we're more than one, we must be right. You know how uh, democracy here in the United States is extended to the truth. So let's say we're 10 people in this room and uh, nine of them say, hey, um, I don't know, there's no moon. There's, the moon doesn't exist. And I say, yes, the moon exists because there are nine and I'm one. They are supposed to be right because, hey, can't you see there are nine? You're just one. That, that means by definition that they are right. So they uh, make this stupid, uh, you know, uh, use of democracy in finding the truth not by actually uh, by actual um, you know scientific evidence or anything no or you know trying to figure it out investigate the situation no it's by numbers nine said it that way it must be that way and can't you see and you have people intellectuals who think like that and act like that i've been uh, in front of this kind of situations involved in this kind of situations in meetings where I had, you know, people involved and discussed and, uh, you know, without the evidence, with supporting evidence, they had been the majority. They didn't prove the whatever policy was implemented was beneficial. They just wanted it and because of the number or the facts. They didn't have the facts. They had only the desire that that particular thing will be implemented and, or, and it's true. So let's see what Putin says here in the Sputnik. From today, uh, the 21st of December 2022, Putin says that almost entirety of NATO's military potential being actively used against Russia. So he says that almost all the military potential that NATO countries have to send, to produce weapons, to all that, uh, is used actively used against Russia. Well, uh, one thing that it's very important that it's not used in Russia is the aviation. Uh, they don't uh, give them tanks as they probably could, not probably, certainly could, and there's no active fighters over there. So given the circumstances, I think Putin, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say he's right or not, but I think he provides more information on the issue. So let's see, Russian officials and some Western media and pundits have characterized the conflict in Ukraine as a proxy war between the West and Russia. The US and its allies have poured tens of billions of dollars worth of military aid into Ukraine, trained tens of thousands of troops, and provided Kiev with intelligence and strategic level planning support. Remember, this is Sputnik, okay? So put your lenses for Sputnik. When I'm using uh, Ukrainska Pravda or the new voice of Ukraine or Reuters or these other weasels or BBC or anything like that put other kind of lenses and look at it you know what I mean what I'm trying to say you know they all have an agenda you know they all tell you their story their script so you have to understand which, which who's who what's what and you put the right lenses to discard the bullshit and try to get whatever information you might get for instance here in this in the title is clear 
the, you should have not an almost entirely of NATO's military potential being actively used against Russia. What you probably have to take out of it, or at least I take of it, a lot of support uh, Ukraine receives from NATO troops who are pro uh, providing uh, a lot of uh, you know help. We knew that. Now, let's see the, the the extent they say here that uh, they are doing this and doing that. All right, the military potential of almost all NATO countries is being actively used against Russia and Moscow must improve its knowledge and understanding of the Western bloc's weapon system experience and tactics to improve the fighting potential of the Russian military, President Vladimir Putin has said, and I'm quoting, it's well known that today the military potential and capabilities of almost all major NATO countries are being actively used against Russia, end quote. Putin said, speaking at a meeting with senior Russian Defense Ministry officials on Wednesday, today, Oh, and I'm quoting, all the information about NATO forces, the means which are actively used in the course of the special military operation in Ukraine to oppose us are well known. You have all this information before you and it must be thoroughly analyzed and used in the construction of our armed forces to increase the combat capabilities of the troops as well as Russian special services. So basically, you see the tactics, incorporate them, uh, design uh, um, tactics, uh, strategy to oppose them and to uh, win. All right, as Putin ordered the Ministry of Defense and the General Staff to, and I'm quoting, carefully analyze the tremendous combat experience gained in the course of the military operation in Ukraine to systemize, this is uh, under quotation marks, systemize it as quickly as possible and include it in programs and planning for a training of personnel, troops, as a whole and supplying the forces with necessary equipment. So Putin accused Moscow's geopolitical opponents of using everything that isn't tied down against Russia, including efforts to brainwash the population of Ukraine and other post-Soviet republics in the af aftermath of the collapse of the USSR in 1991. The process continues today, according to Putin. Russia has said, Russia, he said, had sought to become a part of the quote-unquote civilized world but soon learned that it was, and I'm quoting, not expected there. Now they have to get a strategic balance um, and modernize their weapons. And he says, Ukraine conflict shows need for new technology, says Putin. Uh, in the near future, I'm quoting, every individual soldier should have the opportunity to receive information transmitted from drones. We must push for this, strive for this, end quote. Putin said targets, and I'm quoting again, targets need to be detected as quickly as possible and, inform and information must be transmitted immediately to carry out strikes in real time. Well, um, this is very strange because everything that he said, uh, I thought they have already, or at least they are right there. And he tells us that it has to uh, evolve in that, improve. Okay, that's fine. Regarding the West fighting uh, the, the Russia, I think it's maybe two, two or two or maybe two countries. I would say main countries that are fighting for the dominance and uh, uh, to subdue Russia. That's how I see it. And um, and the other ones are just dragged dragged into it by by into this by interest, economic interest, and some people by hatred. Some people, some I would say not say nations, but uh, countries. I would say by hatred, payback to Russia and uh, and I can name them, you know where they're at. I think uh, and they show uh, themselves by uh, their statements. Now, if you have a grievance against a country, uh, you, know, you know, you try to use any means uh, possible to uh, destroy your enemy. But some countries did not know that they are actually uh, their enemies. Like for instance, when you talk with a person and you realize during the conversation, if it gets a little bit heated, that that person digs from within it himself or herself some hatred or something and you say whoa i didn't know you hate me this much i didn't know you were so passionate about passion being a nice word passionate about you know uh solving problems with me but since we are at it let's discuss that and maybe we can solve whatever it is over there that it's unsolved uh, let's discuss it and maybe we can solve it it's i mean what am i supposed to do but uh, when the other person says, no, I don't, I don't want to smack you in the head for all that, and that's undiscussable, we can't change that, 
then uh, it becomes okay let's see who's winning them uh, physically it seems like so that's the case of, uh, for instance, the Baltic states and Poland specifically uh, to, towards uh, Russia. There's a lot of grievances, um, you know, and uh, it's towards Russia more than to the uh, uh, Soviet Union, which Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union as well. And they're very upset with the Russians when uh, leaders that, create, that were uh, guilty of the biggest crimes of the Soviet Union were non-Russians. So I think their uh, hatred is very much misguided. Uh, that is not very much misguided, but they try to find who is the one that they can hit. They don't want to hit right now Ukraine. They're not going to hit uh, Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan or uh, who, whatever, Armenia or uh, something like that. No, Russia. Why? Because of Moscow. But if you look at the leaders, you start with, with Lenin. Psh, it was Russian, right? You start with what? Trotsky, Russian, huh? Kaganovich Russian, Beria Russian, huh? Stalin Russian, huh? Uh, you know, uh, so you go with all these biggest criminals. I'm not talking about Brezhnev. Brezhnev was this compared with all everybody that I mentioned so far. Brezhnev, okay, he was Russian, or Andropov for what for a year? Who Gorbachev, Russian? Who did good? And so their their thing. Oh, he was Russia leading. If it was, it was Russia leading, why it was the biggest guys and the most the biggest criminals of the Soviet Union were mostly non-Russians. How is that possible? And you check them out. I mean, I just give you a few names, but you check them out. Remember when that uh, official of the Crown, uh, the British guy, you can remember he was uh, something about uh, he came to the U.S. Uh, to the British Embassy in Moscow, whatever it was at that time, 1918, 1920. 1920s, 1918, he went to write a report for the, you know, for the U.S., for the Great Britain regarding the Russian Revolution, and he wrote the report. In that report, it's somewhere where he says there's nothing Russian about the Russian uh, Bolshevik Revolution, and he mentioned why because 80% of the leadership was uh, kind of, uh, you know, what I mean. Go and read those things. Or do I have to tell you here? So get in trouble with uh, our friends that uh, monitor our. Uh, freedom of speech. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.